In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the lifted increase. It's a nearly invisible method of increasing even when two of them are used side by side. There are no holes in this fabric. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are chapter links in the video timeline. There is a lifted right increase and a lifted left increase. And this is handy to know if you are in a situation where you need to do mirrored increases. So if you're in a situation where you don't need to do mirrored increases, you just need to do a increase or you're needing to do a bunch of increases but only one time, then it doesn't matter which one of these increases you use. You can use whichever one you want. But if you're in a situation where you, you need to have mirrored increases, like with a sleeve or a neckline or something like that where you need to have increases that are mirror, mirrors of each other. Um, then you need the, the right uh, lifted increase uh, and the left lifted increase. So I placed markers here to show you the division between the area that is not changing in size. This is the area that's not getting increased on each of these selvages. And this is the area that is changing in size. This is where the increases are going to occur. So in this situation, I am going to pick a right leaning lifted increase right after this marker. So the right leaning increase is going to be leaning to the right edge and the left leaning increase is going to be leaning toward the left edge. They're actually leaning toward the marker. And normally I wouldn't bother with a marker. I would just knit three stitches and then I would know to do, to do my increase. But I wanted to uh, make it clear that we are leaning these increases toward the marker. For a lifted right increase, you're going to look at the stitch that's immediately below the needle. Not the one that is on the needle, but below the needle. And you can see that the stitch looks like a V. There's a right leg and a left leg. You're going to use your working needle to lift that right leg, to lift this one that's closest to the marker up onto the needle. So you're going to lift it up so that it's on the needle like that. Now you're going to knit this stitch. You could purl it if you needed a purl stitch at this point, you could purl it. You can move the yarn in front and purl it. Uh, in most cases, you're going to want to knit it. So knit it however you knit it with the yarn in your right hand or left hand, it doesn't matter. So you're gonna knit that stitch. This is your increase, that's your new stitch. And now you're going to knit the stitch that was already on the needle to begin with. Now we're going to knit all the way until we get to the marker. So we're going to knit this stitch that's right next to the marker. And this time we're going to do a lifted left increase. And this time we're going to lift the leg closest to the marker. So the left leg of the stitch that's two rows below the needle. We're not going for the one right below the needle. We're going for the one two rows before. So let me back up and show you why. When we're in this position, we have a live stitch on the left hand needle and we have the stitch that's under the needle. Remember we did our lifted right increase in that stitch that's below the needle. Since we're going to, we're going to need to do the increase in that the left leg of that stitch that's currently below the needle, but that we have to work the stitch on the needle first. So when we work this stitch, the stitch that's on the needle right now is now coming off the needle and it is now under the needle. So that stitch that was under the needle over here is now two rows below. So we're going to lift this left leg. We're gonna come from behind it and lift it up on the needle. And now we're going to knit that stitch. So we're going to, I got a little bit of snag there. So we're going, and you'll see how it's sitting on the needle with the leading leg, that's the leg closest to the tip, is over the back of the needle. That's fine. We're going to go right through the center. We don't want to go through the front like that. That's going to end up twisting this stitch. We're going to go right through the center and knit that stitch. So this is the new stitch. This is the increased stitch. That's the existing stitch that was there uh, all along, the existing column of stitches. And now we can slip our marker and um, work to the end of the row. If you are working from the purl side of the fabric or if you have purl stitches, 
uh, you're going to do the same thing where you're you're going to be working toward the marker. So if I slip this marker right now, what I would do at this point is I would come from underneath this pearl bump and I would lift it onto the needle like that. And then again, you can see that the leading leg is toward the tip. So if I wanted to purl it, I would come through here um, from the back. If I wanted to knit it, I would come through this way. If I'm on the purl side and I'm heading toward a marker like this, then I would work the stitch that's right before the marker. And this time I want to, to lift the purl bump that's two rows below the needle. So I come again from underneath to grab that purl bump. And then I could either knit or purl it. And this one is showing the leading leg toward the tip. So I'm going to either knit or purl through that front leg. So I can either come through the front to knit it or I can come through this way to purl it. So in this scenario, remember we're doing the increases in the center of the fabric and the edges are remaining as they are. And we're always doing the increase in the center area that's getting larger and we're leaning those increases toward the marker. So it's going to the right this way and it's going to the left this way. Uh, but sometimes you have a different scenario. You have a scenario where the center is what is going to remain stable and you want the increases on the outside of that. So in this case, you would knit up to the marker and you'd have this increase going toward that marker and the increase over here going toward this marker. So that's how these markers are useful into determining which side of the marker is supposed to be stable and or static and which side is growing and you're do, going to do the increase on the side that's growing and you're going to lean it toward the marker. So I'm going to work toward the marker. Okay, I've reached the marker and now I want to do the, the increase that leans toward the left. So I'm going to do the lifted left increase and for this, since I've just worked this stitch, I need to find the stitch that's two rows below. So let me just get this marker out of the way for right now. So it's this one right here. So I lift this one up onto the needle and you can see the leading leg is toward the tip. I'm going to knit this and that is the new stitch. I'm going to put my marker back on here. Now I'm going to knit across. So this is this area between the markers is not changing in size. So I slip that marker. Now this is the column of stitches that is going to turn into two columns. So I want to lift the right leg, the leg that's closest to the marker that's right under the needle. I lift this up and onto the needle and then I knit it. And then I can knit this stitch right here. Here's an example of a swatch where I kept those center stitches uh, as they were and I created the increases next to them. And I did the increases, so I always did the uh, left-leaning increase before this section that doesn't change and the right-leaning one afterwards. You don't have to do that. As long as you're consistent, you could do it the opposite way. So here is an example of a swatch where I did it the opposite way. I actually think in some ways that the center section is more defined and that the increases are a little more obvious than they are in this one. They're both pretty similar, but there is a slight difference. Ultimately, the decision about what, whether you have uh, left here and right here or, or do it the opposite is an aesthetic choice. I'm going to knit to the center of this swatch because I want to demonstrate to you uh, how you can do a double increase in between two stitches. So I've got six stitches in the center. So I am going to turn these two stitches into four columns of stitches. I'm going to do side by side lifted increases. So I want the increases, the stitches that result from, from knitting from a lifted leg to be in between these two existing stitches. So that means I'm gonna to have to knit this one first 
and do a lifted left increase. So I lift the leg two rows below and I knit that one. And now I'm going to do a lifted right increase. I'm gonna lift the right leg of the stitch immediately below the needle. And then I'm going to knit that. And then I'm going to knit the original stitch. Uh, so now I've turned those two stitches into, uh, two columns of stitches into four columns of stitches. These two columns look what kind of spread at the bottom, and that's because you're forcing four columns of stitches into a place where there were two, and so these have to spread a little bit, but you don't get holes. This is a bit of an artificial example of using side-by-side -side lifted increases, but I wanted to show you that you don't get holes like you do if you try to do two make one increases right next to each other or, or something like that. So one place where I will use side-by-side -side lifted increases is when I am working a sock from the top down with a heel flap and gusset. And I've knit my heel flap and I've done the heel turn and I've picked up stitches along the first edge of the heel flap. And then I get to the corner where I need to start uh, working on the instep stitches that have been waiting for me since I started the heel flap. So a lot of times you can get holes in this corner. And so the trick here to avoiding a hole is that after you work, after you've picked up that last stitch of the heel flap, you do a lifted left increase. And before you work the first step of the instep, you work a lifted right increase. So you're creating two new columns of stitches in between these two over here, and that fills in that gap that you can get. And, and then on the subsequent rounds, you decrease those extra stitches out. And I've done a video on this technique, how I use lifted increases um, in order to avoid a hole at that junction, and I will link to it up here. Another situation in which you might use these side-by-side -side double increases is when you are knitting closed cables of this type, which is uh, Elizabeth Lavold's method of, of working what she calls Viking cables. And so these types of cables, you start out with a background of purl stitches and then these ropes are created. So any stitches that you want to use for these knitted ropes are created at the base of the cable. So you start out by doing side by side double de or double increases between two purl stitches. You create two new knit stitches between two purl stitches. And then on the next right side row where those two knit stitches are, you then do another set of double increases so that you have the four stitches. And once you have the four stitches, you can have two ropes of two stitches that can then move and travel across the fabric. So that's another situation in which side-by-side -side double lifted increases can be really beneficial. Like all knitting techniques, these increases have multiple names. Kat Bordy calls these increases La Link and La Rink, while some designers refer to them as KRL for knit right leg and KLL for knit left leg. While the lifted increases work really well in solid color stockinette fabric, they may cause a distortion in some stitch patterns like color work and textured fabrics where that single column of stitches transitions into two columns. When stacking lifted increases more often than every four rows, you will notice the fabric has less vertical stretch along that line of increases. This can be a disadvantage for many projects, but for others, this can be an advantage. When in doubt, swatch it out. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.